Did you know that urine pH is directly linked to the formation of almost every kidney stone type? I sure didn't back when I was forming kidney stones. So if you'd like to level up your kidney stone prevention game, you're gonna wanna check out this video. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman, and welcome to Stone Relief. The pH of our bodies, let alone the pH of our urine, is a highly contested topic. Not a day goes by that I don't come across scientific articles or some health guru espousing the benefits of alkalizing the body. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but this is just a marketing scheme devised by large corporations to sell you things that you absolutely do not need. Unfortunately, much of this deliberate misinformation is leading people astray and causing an untold number of kidney stones. On the other side of the coin, with 87% of the population suffering from one form of metabolic dysfunction or the other, acidic urine is equally as problematic. Ultra-processed foods, seed oils, and high sugar consumption drive urine pH to be acidic, again, setting people up for kidney stones. So this begs the question. What should your urine pH be, especially for those of us in the population that form kidney stones? So today, we're going to dive into this topic headfirst to help you better understand the forces that are at play. And the first place that we're going to start is just by really truly understanding <laughs> what urine pH is and what it actually means so that we can understand the context when we start to talk about being acidic or alkaline or being neutral. So urine really truly at the baseline is a combination of water, salts, and waste. And the balance of these three things is where we have the ability to influence pH. And pH really is just the potential of hydrogen. And really this is the measure of hydrogen ions in a solution or in our urine in this particular example. So the range of these things could really be for urine purposes as a whole between you know, four and a half to kind of on the upper limit of alkaline about eight. Now the pH scale ranges much wider than this but for urine purposes we're really looking in this range. And in general six and a half to seven and a half is about neutral. Seven is usually labeled as neutral, but you know, six and a half to seven and a half, there is a give or take of about a half a per, uh, point in terms of the pH scale. Anything over seven and a half is generally regarded as alkaline. And then anything that's under six and a half, this is generally regarded as acidic. And this is generally a sign of metabolic dysfunction. So this is something to keep an eye out for. In the next chapter, we're going to take a look at what happens when we have alkaline urine, which is all the rage today, and what it means for our risk for kidney stones. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. All right, so now that we have an understanding of what urine pH is, let's talk about the first subset of pH that we're going to talk about in today's video, and that's alkaline urine. So alkaline urine exists when you have a urine pH that is over 7.5. Now, this is, you know, a little bit of a moving target because again, neutral is 7 and over that, again, there's going to be a little bit of nuance here, but generally if you're getting a consistent pH reading of over 7.5, this is going to be alkaline. And unfortunately, alkaline urine sets you up for calcium phosphate stones. Now, the reason for this is that calcium actually favors binding with phosphate in alkaline urine, whereas it favors oxalate in neutral to acidic urine settings. So this is also a potential setup for struvite or bacteria stones as alkaline urine, it's kind of like a vicious feedback loop, is that alkaline urine environment creates the more production of the bacteria and the more production of the bacteria excrete different elements that alkalize the urine and they just keep it flowing and going and you just keep having a recurrent problem. Now, this is the reason that a lot of women uh, who have recurrent UTIs are experiencing calcium phosphate or at a lesser extent, struvite type of bacterial stones. But this is generally something that we see with a population uh, that again, is more focused on a particular style of eating, which we'll talk about here in a second, but it sets them up for failure when it comes to kidney stones. So the primary driver for our urine pH really is diet. Like what we eat has the ability to either positively or negatively influence this. And when it comes to alkalizing your urine, consumption of things like vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes, unrefined grains, or like those ancestral grains they're trying to market to you, and herbs and spices. So if you're forming kidney stones, you're part of a subset, and this is my hypothesis, you're part of a population ancestrally that never really developed the ability to handle plant toxins and manage these different aspects of consuming plants because we're part 
Uh, our ancestors were likely from a more northern latitude, and they just didn't come across plants as frequently as the rest of the population that was maybe living in more um, hospitable latitudes throughout the course of the year where vegetation may have grown and been consumed. Uh, we did not. So these things pose problems for us, and even though the like 80% of the population uh, could potentially exist just fine with alkaline urine, they'll never form a stone in their life. You're a part of this population if you're forming calcium phosphate stones, the stone forming population. And these things are going to be problematic for you because again, they drive your urine pH to alkaline. And if your urine pH is alkaline, calcium is going to bind with phosphate. And there's a possibility that you're going to form these calcium phosphate stones or potentially the more nasty kind of struvite bacterial type of stones. So if you're looking to put an end to these stones, it is not any more complicated than changing your diet to get towards neutral. That's it. In the next chapter, we'll talk about the other side of the coin, which is if you've got more acidic urine and what that means for your kidney stone risk. All right, so now that we understand urine pH as a whole, and we've also talked about the other side of the coin, which is alkaline urine, let's evaluate what's going to happen if our urine is acidic. So acidic urine, again, is generally regarded as anything that is going to be under 6.5. So when urine is acidic, as I had mentioned in the previous chapter, it calcium favors binding with oxalate. So the more acidic that your urine is, the more of a favorable environment that we're setting up for calcium and oxalate to bind together. The other piece of the puzzle here when it comes to acidic urine is uric acid kidney stones. Then most people inappropriately blame uric acid levels. However, uric acid levels have nothing to do with it. You could have sky high levels of uric acid but if you had a neutral pH to your urine, uric acid kidney stones won't form. Now, you would never have that situation persist because there's obviously some other problem and you'd probably be suffering from some other condition. But uric acid kidney stones can only form when acidic urine is present. So what's driving that? Just like with alkaline urine, it is our diet that is driving these things. So what in particular? Well, refined grains. I mean, this is like white flour, uh, wheat, things that are highly, highly processed when it ends up to, in a form that we're going to consume. Uh, processed foods, like ultra processed foods, anything that's got like an ingredient label that's like dense of a paragraph, like just should be avoided as a whole, but they are really, truly tied to this. Soda, sugary foods, and also alcohol. Now, these items here, these foods, are some of the highest drivers of metabolic dysfunction that we have ever seen as a population. So typically people who are eating more of these types of foods have metabolic dysfunction and that is a whole cluster of disorders that can include like abdominal obesity, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and a whole host of other things like diabetes. Uh, and a lot of the population suffers from this. And again, 87% of the Western world is suffering from some sort of metabolic dysfunction or another. 87%. <laughs> so, and these types of things are at an all-time high. So it's no wonder that we're suffering from this and having a high, high degree of calcium oxalate stones being formed and also uric acid stones being formed because those are the two most common type of kidney stone in the world. So again, diet is driving all of this and it's nothing to do with red meat. So red meat has been blamed for so much in the population today. It has literally been blamed for diabetes. It's been heart disease and cancer. They've called red meat like akin to smoke. If you consume red meat, it's like smoking a pack a day. Um, however, this is all fear mongering and it is trying to distract us all from the truth. Red meat is a superfood and it has absolutely nothing to do with acidic urine or causing uric acid kidney stones. Nothing to do with it whatsoever. So, metabolic dysfunction, again, primarily driven by diet, is the root of any type of calcium oxalate stone or uric acid kidney stone because, again, the urine environment is acidic. Now, making changes to your diet is not an easy task. I literally spent a decade experimenting, failing, trying different variables to understand what impact, if any, I could have on my kidney stone formation. And I have successfully figured out this puzzle to the equation of solving kidney stones once and for all. So if you're looking for some help in the decisions that you need to make when it comes to your diet to put an end to your kidney stones, hop onto our website, stone-relief.com, 
click on the coaching button up in the top header and book a call with me. We'll set forth a plan for you to be able to not only achieve the best health of your life, but also put an end to those pesky kidney stones once and for all. Visit our website if you'd like to join a community of people learning to manage their kidney stones naturally. See you in the next video.